Now we'll take a look at the Claisen condensation reaction. And uh, unlike the aldol condensation, this is going to involve esters instead of ketones or aldehydes. And also, it can only operate under a base catalyzed mechanism. The acid catalyzed mechanism is not possible here. So that means we're going to have an enolate as our nucleophile, and in this case, attacking an ester rather than a ketone or aldehyde. And the big difference here is when you attack a ketone or aldehyde, it's nucleophilic addition. But when you attack an ester, it's nucleophilic acyl substitution. And this actually makes the mechanism a little bit easier here, and the reaction in general a little bit easier to follow. So one thing you got to realize, though, that with esters being susceptible to nucleophilic acyl substitution, I've got to be careful what I use for my strong base to form the enolate. So if you look at your leaving group here, if I simply added hydroxide, well, hydroxide would come, come in and do nucleophilic acyl substitution, and we get a carboxylate. Uh, if I used methoxide, I'd do a transesterification, and my OET would get exchanged for an OME. And so what we do here is we always use whatever the leaving group of our particular ester is. That's what we use as the base in step one. So here I'm going to use sodium ethoxide. That way, if nucleophilic acyl substitution does take place, I'm replacing an ethoxide with another ethoxide, and I can't tell the difference. So that's one big thing about the Claisen. So in this case, we're going to deprotonate one of our molecules at the alpha carbon and form that enolate. And again, the pKa of our ester is on the order of like 25. So we might deprotonate one out of 100 million molecules or something like that. So we're not going to form a lot of this enolate. We're going to have a lot of ester left back in our solution. And uh, the one that's still in ester is our electrophile. This enolate that forms is our nucleophile. And we're going to have our nucleophile come in and attack our electrophile. So that's our first, or that's really our second step now. Cool, looks like this now, and just like normally with nucleophilic acyl substitution, these electrons will come right back down, reform the double bond to oxygen, and kick off our leaving group. And if you look at this, this looks astoundingly like our product, which is a beta dicarbonyl. Uh, in fact, it is our product, except we're not done with the reaction yet. So we just formed a product, and yet the reaction's not over. And well, the problem here is that this alpha carbon right here is alpha to both carbonyls, and so his pK is probably on the order of like 9 to 10 or something like this, whereas our original ester was not, you know, pK of 25, and so our original ester, again, one out of 100 million molecules might get deprotonated by ethoxide, whereas here, 99.999% uh, is probably going to get deprotonated, virtually 100%, and so this H right there, another molecule of ethoxide here, We'll just simply come and act as a base and pull that hydrogen off as soon as we form this. And we'll form the enolate. Cool. And again, the big key here is that this step happens virtually 100%. And that's really, really, really important. All the other steps probably are in equilibrium. And so it is this one step right here that because it's a virtually 100% conversion, that's what allows us to get a great yield in this reaction. Because the last step here is just the acid workup step that we're doing in step two here. And we're just going to add some H3O plus, and that's easy. So, but it's this last step in the mechanism for step one, which again, 100% conversion that allows us to get a good yield for these clays and reactions. So now let's take a look at mixed Claisen reactions, sometimes, sometimes again called crossed Claisen reactions. Uh, and in this case, this is very similar to what we saw with aldols. Uh, if you want to get a good yield of a single product, you've got to do it carefully. And, and in this case, we only really got one major option, and that's just simply to use LDA. If you use LDA, one, he's not going to do nucleophilic acyl substitution. He's a big bulky base. Uh, but two, uh, you get to choose which ester forms the enolate. So like in the synthesis I got down below here, we're starting with this ester right here. We're adding LDase only to him, and therefore he's the only one that gets to get deprotonated to the alpha carbon and form the enolate. So he automatically gets to be our nucleophile. So, and then the ester we add in step two, therefore, has to be the electrophile. So if you look at our product here, we're forming this bond right here. 
So, and you can kind of see how that takes place where the enolate here is going to be attacking the carbonyl, kicking the electrons up, and I'm not going to do the whole mechanism here, but those electrons are going to come right back down and kick off the leaving group. Uh, and obviously, I'm skipping total steps here. My point's not to show the mechanism, but uh, we'll form this lovely species. It'll get deprotonated to the alpha carbon, and then we'll add H3O plus to reprotonate it, just like we showed. Uh, but that's kind of the idea behind forming just a single product with a mixed clays and condensation. Got to use LDA.